Good morning, guys. Hey, friends, and welcome back. So as you can see from the title of this video, our trailer got broken into. Now, this did happen when we were back in Canada, not on the road trip. Yeah. Everything's basically accounted for besides a few things. We're safe. We're well. Chloe's well. Yeah. So don't worry about that, at least. But it was a little bit of an eventful situation for us. Yeah, definitely super unsettling. And a couple things did get taken, but luckily we weren't moved in. Like nobody got hurt. Nothing was actually that scary. So don't worry about that. So without further ado, RV Storytime with Luke and Alicia, our trailer was broken into edition. Just really, really quickly before we get into the video, we wanted to let you guys know that we did start up a Patreon. Um, I know a lot of you guys were asking about it and wondering about it. And so we just decided to start it up. Um, like obviously don't feel pressured to go on there and become yeah. a patron, but just wanted to let you know that it's out there. We do put a lot of time and effort into the videos. Like it's 10 hours at least per vlog we were thinking recently. So if you wanna help us invest in better technology, be able to do cooler things and support the travels and really be a part of it with us, a few fun things in there. And if you wanna check that out, otherwise back to the video. Okay, so where do we even start? I guess to set the scene kind of, we were prepping for our US travel trip that we're on now. Um, everything was kind of really last minute because we had last minute sold our motor home and didn't know if we would have the time to buy a travel trailer and go on this trip this summer um everything was just so last minute and we were just packing and planning and getting ready and uh this happened yeah and i was still working basically yeah. full time up until this point there's yeah. just so many things on the go that we were just in a whirlwind of getting things done and then right before two days two sleeps before we left this happened yeah so. And on top of all the packing and everything, we were busy like making lithium battery upgrades for RV and yeah. getting storage solutions figured out. Like it was just like so much going on in these like five days, like right before a trip that this like was just the icing on top. So what had happened is three days before we took off on our road trip and went to go cross the border into the United States, we I think it was the day that we started packing things into the RV. We had really like started packing all our clothes, like all the RV stuff we got together, all the dishes and everything like that from a motorhome that was packed away. And um, yeah, we were just making trips up to the RV and putting stuff in it. And then it was eventually getting too late and we decided that we'd finish our job tomorrow, um, the next day, which would have been two days before we left on our road trip. Yeah. Yeah, I was in the middle of organizing my through hatch where all my tools and goodies and like basic RV essential stuff is. I had all of it completely gutted the day previously, just spread it on the ground so I could organize and going through it because it's a paid storage facility with a gate with a code on it and security cameras. So it wasn't like it was just a, like a friend's property or anything. We were in like an actual paid per month facility. So no one was even there, but a few people did actually drive through that day, which normally had been pretty dead all winter. So mm -hmm. people did drive through maybe like two and saw I had all of my stuff out on the ground organized, but again, a lot of drill and RV stuff that we use in there. And that was all left loosey goosey and well, not it wasn't home. left loosey goosey. It was we had decided to call it quits for that night. Um, we just threw everything loose into the through hatch. We didn't even bother putting our stairs up. We did lock the door. Obviously, we locked all the hatches. Yeah, um, we made sure everything was locked up and put away. Yeah. And then we just went home for that night. So then we arrived the next day. We're getting there with our last bit of stuff to load in because we were pretty much fully packed. We had a lot of like our iPads and tech stuff already in the trailer that night even. So we were taking our last trip. We were gonna just make sure everything was lined up that day prior to departing the very next day. So we show up and I guess Alicia was the first one to find her signs. I found my own signs, but. Yeah, so Luke was still in the truck, like getting stuff ready to like bring into the trailer or whatever. Um, and I had gone with the keys to go unlock the door. And when I went around the trailer, the first thing I noticed was our through hatch door was not closed. Like it wasn't like wide open, but it was just hanging and it wasn't latch closed. It wasn't locked. And I was like, I don't think we left that there, but okay, that's kind of weird. And then I looked down the trailer further and I saw that the exact same thing, the um, our outside kitchen hatch was also just left open and kind of just hanging there. And I was like, we definitely didn't even open that hatch yesterday and it was definitely closed and locked. So what's going on here? 
um, that's when I kind of like called Luke over and I was like, Luke, like I think something happened. And then very next thing I looked at our trailer door lock, which got pretty mangled. Yeah, so I'm leaving the truck. I'm on my way over. And then I seen one of the big hitch receiving pins you'd put in your truck, not the little one on the trailer, but when you put your hitch in the truck and the big pin goes through, there was just a rusty one of those on the ground without the pin to hold it in place, but it was there. And then an old cell phone case was laying there on the ground as well. And like that was laying right where I had organized all my through hatch stuff the day previously. So I would have recalled seeing basically garbage laying there. So I was like, weird to find that beside your trailer. And then, yeah, I met Alicia at the door and it looks like they had tried to break in with, I imagine, a flathead screwdriver of some kind. You can see the lock is completely mangled. So they probably crammed it in there and just hoped it would twist and turn nice and easy and pried it around, which shredded a lot of the metal. The key was a bit tough going in and out at first. So we were going to change the lock pretty quick, but the key managed to work. At least we can get inside and check it out. And then when we opened the door, we noticed there's also three deep marks where you can see they stuck the screwdriver in the side of the door and then tried to like pop it and hope they could just pop it through. Now our nice, we just go and finally treat ourselves to a nice brand new trailer. I know. The metal trim is damaged and you can see the pry marks on it. The lock is damaged and we're gonna have to replace that or live with that being damaged. And then when he got into the outside hatches we just talked about, the way he got in is the hatch design has, don't say he. We don't know if it's a he. It could okay. have been a she. <laughs> so the way the person got into them is the way those hatches work is there's one side that's just a basic twisting mechanism that holds over top and then one side twists the key. The key twists down a little tongue that goes behind a metal groove inside. So it's not anything crazy like a door where it's a little more advanced. It just twists this lever. On the front side of that locking mechanism, there's just a little handle spot that you can grab so when you unlock it, that handle is how you lift the hatch up. Makes sense. So we can see it's all scratched on both of them. A big metal scratch now has damaged our new paint as well. Awesome, starting to the new trailer. <laughs> and basically he just would have had to come up. Basically they would have just had to come along and grab it and just put their body weight and a little bit of effort into it. And when you twist that outside mechanism, because it's attached to the whole locking mechanism, the outside handle twists and the lock twists up as well and he got into our through hatch. Yeah, basically we've learned, I mean, it's kind of obvious if you think about it, we just never thought about it because I don't know who thinks about getting their hatches broken into, but they're really, really easy to break into, obviously. Terribly. So just keep in mind, if you're keeping anything in those hatches, make sure it's not super, super valuable. I mean, even if you're at a campsite, it would be really easy for somebody to just come into your campsite, kind of like just walk in twist it open and see what's in there. So keep that in mind. So backtracking a bit to the door lock, um, how it was all mangled and they tried prying our door open. I just wanted to mention quickly that it was still locked when we got there and yeah. nobody had gotten into the RV, which we're so thankful for because like Luke said, we did have um, our drone already in there. We had our iPads, we had some pretty like valuable things that we would have been really, really upset if we would have lost and also it's just obviously really unsettling to have some stranger walking around in your travel trailer with all of your items in it already. And like, we're just so thankful that nothing crazy happened to mm. the inside of our RV. Um, we're thankful that there was no significant damage done to our RV. I mean, there was some damage and- Yeah, just a bit of aesthetics. Yeah, mostly aesthetics. And it's not worth us going through the hassle of like an insurance claim or anything, it's just, you know, it is what it is. It sucks, but <laughs> yeah, it's definitely something that we can live with. And again, replace our locks and get that dealt with. But yeah, and the lock wasn't broken. At least we didn't have to fix that before mm -hmm. departing. Cause again, we were getting ready right now, in case you're not aware, if you're new to our channel, we're on a hundred day USA road trip, going to a lot of national parks and we're doing a huge loop of it all. So it's a big trip. And then we're going to keep full-time RV living when we get back to Canada as well as the plan right now. So we've got a lot of RVing going on and we're moving all of our stuff in and we have a daughter and safety and securities are like, I would say number one priority with those both combined in that right now. That's why we've booked so many more state parks and all the nice places we're going. Yes, they're nice, but also we can feel safe with our daughter. So. To have this happen right before moving into a trailer and living in a foreign country to us, mm -hmm. not what we planned on. I did post a little TikTok a couple of days ago, just like um, giving you guys an update about getting broken into and stuff like that. And um, quite a few people have been asking, obviously, if anything was stolen. And 
It actually took us a little bit to figure out if anything was stolen because it wasn't immediately obvious to us. Yeah. Uh, like Luke said, he had he, he was organizing the pegboard and he was trying to get the through hatch organized and we decided to call it quits and go home for the night. So we had literally just thrown everything into the through hatch. It was a mess. There was no organization done in there. So when we got to the trailer and we realized it was broken into, we didn't know if anything was stolen. It looked like nothing was stolen mm -hmm. because you know, our hitch was in there. It wasn't taken. Thank goodness. Yeah, the hitch was in there. I could have definitely stopped the whole trip quick. Like our power cord was in there. It wasn't taken. Yeah, power drill, like a drill, drill would be a handy yeah. tool. There was just a lot. There was everything in there. There was our new uh, sewer hose extension. There was our brand new sidewinder. There was just like all of this really random stuff. Um, our Anderson levelers, those are really expensive. Which is like the stuff you would expect to find in an RV though, might I add, right? Like yeah. if you break into an RV's outside hatch, like you're gonna find stuff for s'mores. You're gonna find campfire supplies. You're gonna find chairs. So like you broke into it and you found like RV power cords and stuff. It's like, you didn't break into a jewelry store. Yeah. You broke into a camping trailer. Yeah. So, I don't know. So <laughs> like we said, originally we kind of thought like maybe they didn't take anything. This is really weird, but um, when we had got to, I think maybe our second campsite on the road, we had really stopped and we were organizing the hatch and Luke was organizing his pegboard a lot more and stuff. And we did realize eventually that an entire basket of stuff was taken, which had our, well, Luke's brand new gloves that I just convinced him to buy. <laughs> yeah, I've been like a knob sold on I just wanna, I don't mind using my hands and banging them up just to use them. And she's like, you should buy a pair of gloves if you're doing hitch stuff. And I was like, on the fence in the store forever then i finally bought them in the end haven't even used them <laughs> and my gloves got taken so that worked out well for me yeah and so then otherwise like our thermocell got taken yeah a mosquito repellent type of thing yeah and then our 50 amp to 30 amp dog bone i can't even fully remember the rest of the stuff i know that there was an extension cord um again just such random things and yeah just one random basket they just took that basket yeah. and didn't put anything else in it and just which makes me wonder if they were kind of interrupted or spooked somehow because of, I don't know, the random hitch pin and stuff on the ground and then only taking that. But who knows, maybe they were on foot and they couldn't carry anything else. <laughs> maybe, it is a heavy hitch. Yeah. And then otherwise, we've just talked about if we want to ever replace our RV main door a lot. Luckily, the key is working. It shows it's been beat up. I think it shows it's tough. Someone's already tried to break into this baby. You think you're gonna have better luck? Good luck. I want to replace it kind of like sooner than later. Luke thinks it doesn't matter, but I'm just worried that somehow like something's gonna come loose in there and all of a sudden our key isn't gonna work, which would really suck. Yeah. I do want to replace it, but I don't because it's key to like with everything else. Yeah, so it just means another key if we have to replace that. And ugh, that's annoying. Although, one thing we have talked about looking into is getting a keyless entry for it. Yeah. Then it would be one more key, but we would probably just use the pin pad 95% of the time anyway. So I think that's the way to go. Honestly. We might invest in a keyless entry down the road here, but that's where we're at right now. Yeah, and then we also just wanted to quickly touch on some other just like theft preventative things we've got going on. We've debated about this for quite a while <laughs> before we left on our trip. Um, whether or not you should buy locking pins for your um, mm. hitch receiver and for your, what's it called? Your hitch pin on your trailer. Because <laughs> um, basically, I mean, it's just an extra key you have to have when you're setting up and taking on and you have to lock it and you have to reach. And it's like, it's kind of annoying to have, but we did decide to go out and buy the locking hitch pin and receiver pin. Yeah. Just because. <laughs> Yeah, it was like a $40 combo kit or something like that. The fear was, is that because we have this big hitch, it's like a $700 or something like that set up with the sway bars and everything. So even if you just lost the hitch, that's the main part of it. And we'd have to buy an expensive replacement, so it helps protect that a little bit. If we were to lose it, all of a sudden we're out on the road and then it's checkout time at your campsite and then you realize it's gone, that would be a terrible situation to be in because literally could hinder the whole trip. Mm -hmm. and. When I was researching it right after I bought it, I did see YouTube videos. I'm aware that these can be broken pretty easy. If you like YouTube search any of those locks, you might be using yourself. Even the one we put on our front trailer, people have videos of taking a bar and prying it off in like seven seconds. So they are like, if someone's gonna steal your stuff, they're gonna steal your stuff, but it's a bit more of a deterrent at least. 
And also, I just thought like, say you're parked at Walmart or you're parked at a gas station and you gotta run inside. If someone's just one of those kind of petty thefts, I could just take your pin as a random act of vandalism. And if you don't check your hookup setup before you leave again, I mean, I could imagine the visualization of your hitch plug on the back <laughs> of your truck and then the chains would catch it and like, I don't know. For $40, it just seemed like the right thing to do to protect your investment and give you peace of mind that it's not ever gonna have anything like get tampered with while you're out on the road. We also decided to buy previous to the break-in, but we also think it's very important to have is a lock for the ball receiver on the trailer. I don't know, is that what it's called? Anyways, this thing. <laughs> yeah. It's just a little ball that locks onto your trailer so that nobody can pull up to your trailer, hook up really, really easy, and just take your trailer with them. Um, luckily, we did have that installed before we got broken into, and that wasn't an issue. Like, nobody's gonna be taking our trailer away from yeah. us. But just wanted to let you guys know that is another kind of theft prevention thing that you should probably look into. And again, we'll link all of these items that we bought down below in our little, like, Amazon spot in the video. We'll have a spot with our trailer stuff so you can see exactly the kind of products we chose to use. We have no affiliation with them. We don't really have any like experience trying different products, but the ones that we are using seem pretty easy to use. And again, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it type thing, I guess, because yeah. it's a little extra protection. Anyways, that's it for our little story time of us getting broken into. And our poor new travel trailer being damaged. So if you ever see any like videos where we're opening up the hatches and there's scratches and stuff, that's what that is. Now you know. Sorry we didn't tell you right away. We were just so busy, of course, getting out on the road. Well, we were like packing and then we didn't want to start the video off with like all our border excitement and be like, also, here's a long-winded, sad story of our trailer being scratched, so. Busy in that, and also, we wanted to kind of get the full story before we exactly. let you guys know. Um, like, originally, we, like we said, we didn't know if anything was stolen or not, and we had been trying to get in contact with the storage lot to see if we can get, like, any answers, any leadway, but they don't really seem yeah, to Yeah, they kind of just so. forgot about us right away, so that's unfortunate. We don't even know what we would have really gotten out of it other than <laughs> watching somebody break into our RV, so. <laughs> yeah, that would have been nice footage if we could have shared that with you, have the actual prying motion, but yeah, alas, we do not. Anyways, we'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for doing a story time. If you enjoyed story time too, and you made it to this part of the video, let us know down below because yeah. A lot of our travels obviously are vlogs and showing what we're up to, but if you want us to just share more stories of interesting things that have happened, or if you have any like questions down the road we could do story times on, we're always open to doing more of these segments as well. Yeah. So let us know. Thanks so, guys. See you guys next time. Bye. Take care. Are we doing this right now? Yeah. That's how I do it. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Hey friends and welcome back. Sorry, my eyes are really hard. I know, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I know, I'm burned. I can't stare, I'm like squinting, like, I'm gonna have no eyeballs. <laughs> when, Do we need sunglasses? <laughs> Do we shoot this at like sunset? Some no, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Okay. Good morning, guys. Hey, friends, and welcome back. <laughs> I know, it's horrible. <laughs> it hurts my eyes. It's already all set up, we have to do I know. It. Oh, okay, shade's coming. Ready? Ooh, we could use shade. <laughs> <laughs> a lock for your hitch ball, your ball, your balls. You got a lock for your balls. <laughs> What's it called?